Okay, magandang umaga sa lahat. Uh, today, we're going to discuss the concept of ratio. Ratios are useful tool for comparing things in mathematics and real life. So, it's important to know what they mean and how to use them. This lesson will help you to understand ratio and how they work. At the end of this lesson, you are able to express one value as a fraction of another given the ratio and vice versa. So, simulan na natin yung ating discussion. Mga bata, tingnan nyo ang nasa larawan. So, ilan na mga batang inyong nakikita? Tama, mayroon tayong 20 pupils. Sa 20 pupils na yan, ilan naman sa kanila ang mga lalaki? Mahusay, meron tayong eight na boys. Ilan naman sa ilan naman ang mga babaeng nasa larawan? Very good. Meron tayong 12 na girls. So ngayon, i-compare natin ang number of boys sa number of girls gamit ang fraction form. We compare the number of boys to the number of girls using the fraction form. 8 ang number ng boys, 12 ang number ng girls. So, ang ating first, ang, ang 8 or yung number ng boys, ang tawag natin dyan ay first term. Ang 12 naman, ang number ng girls, ang tawag natin dito ay second term. Ang tawag natin dyan ay ratio. Kinukumpara natin yung dalawang bilang, ang bilang ng boys at ang bilang ng girls. Mayroon naman tayong tatlong paraan kung paano isulat ang ratio. Mayroon tayong fraction form, mayroon tayong word form, mayroon tayong colon form. Ang ginamit natin kanina sa pagkukumpara sa number ng boys at sa number ng girls ay fraction form. So, eto siya. Ayan ang fraction form. Ang word form naman ay 8 is to 12. So, word form, may makikita natin ang word na is, makikita natin ang word na 2. And the next, colon form, ito naman ang kanyang itsura. Meron siyang tuldok, tuldok. So, iyan ang tatlong paraan kung paano isulat ang mga, or isulat ang ratio. Kagaya ng fractions, ang ratios ay pwede rin nating going simply as form. Meron tayong steps na kailangang sundin. Ang unang step, find the GCF by prime factorization. So, hahanapin natin yung prime factors ng mga ng ratios natin. So, example, 8 is to 12. So, ano-ano ang prime factors ng 8 at saka ng 12? Ano yung kanilang common factors. So, yun yung ating hahanapin sa 8 is to 12 para ma-lowest term siya. So, the, the prime factors of 8 is 2, 2, 2. Pag may multiply natin yan, ang magiging product mo ay 8. Kapag hindi 8 ang iyong product, 
ibig sabihin ibig sabihin noon mali yung pagkuha mo ng prime factors ng 8 and the next ang prime factors ng 12 ay 2 2 3 pag binultiply mo yung tatlong yan ang product niya dapat ay 12 so kunin natin yung kanilang common factors ang common factors nila ay 12 so pag multiply mo ang 2 and 2 ang magiging sagot ay 4 so proceed na tayo sa second step ang second step natin divide both numerator and denominator by the GCF so tandaan ang ating first step kuhanin ang GCF ng 8 and 12 and then second divide natin ang GCF so 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2 then 12 divided by 4 is equal to 3 so the lowest term or the simplest form of 8 is to 12 is 2 is to 3 so paano natin siya isusulat sa fraction form as is lang 8 is to 12 as 2 is to 3 and then ang word form niya 8 is to 12 as 2 is to 3. So, parehas lang din ang basa, na, basa natin sa kanila. Then, ang colon form, 8 is to 12 as 2 is to 3. So, ibig sabihin yan, lahat ng yan ay magkaka-equal. Ang 8 is to 12 is equal to 2 is to 3. The next, another example, Reduce the ratio 40 is to 16 to its lowest term. So first, find the GCF by prime factorization yung 40 and 16. So 40 and 16, the prime factors of 40, 2, 2, 2, and 5. So 2 times 2 is equal to 4, 4 times 2 is equal to 8, and 8 times 5 is equal to 40. Kapag ang product ng iyong prime factor sa hindi parehas doon sa kinukuha mo ng prime factorization, ibig sabihin mali ang pagkuha ng iyong prime, mali ang iyong mga prime factors. The next, 16, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. So their common factors, tatlong 2, 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. So, the prime factors of 40 and 16 is 8. So, pwede na tayo mag-proceed sa second step. So, second step, divide both numerator and denominator by the GCF. So, 40 divided by 8 is equal to 5. Then, 16 divided by 8 is equal to 2. So, the lowest term of 40 is to 16 is 5 is to 2. So, we can read this 40 is to 16 as 5 is to 12. So, parehas ang kanilang value. Magka-equal lang silang parehas. Okay, in this picture, we have 8 boys. We have, we also have 12 girls. So, important rin yung pagkakasunod-sunod kapag in-express natin ang isang ratio. Okay, example number one. When we compare the numbers of boys to girls. So, number of boys, ang ating first term, ang second term natin is number of girls. So, kailangan ganito natin siya isusulat. So, fraction form, 8 is to 12. So, ang una nating term or ang ating first term ay number of boys. So, ano ba ang number ng ating boys? Ano ang kanyang bilang? So, mayroon tayong 8. So, ang bilang niya ay 8. So, yan ang ating first term. Ang susunod natin, ang susunod natin term ay number of girls. Ito ang girls. Second term, ang number of girls natin dito ay 12. So, kailangan pangalawa si 12. So, nage-gets po natin kung ano ang naunang number na hinahanap, iyon ang ating first term. Kung yung second term natin, yung pangalawang hinahanap. So, kapag sinulat natin siya sa word form, 8 is to 12. Uh, colon form, 8 is to 12. 
So, hindi siya pwedeng magbaliktad. So, magkakaiba yung kalalabasan or interpretation natin sa picture kapag nagbaliktad ang number of girls at number of boys. So, next second next example natin, when we compare the number of girls to boys, magkabaliktad lang. So, baliktad lang natin ang number. Fraction form, 12 is to 8. Number of, uh, number of girls natin, 12. First term naman siya ngayon. And then, second term natin, number of boys, which is 8. Word form, 12 is to 8. Colon form, 12 is to 8. The order of terms in ratio must correspond to the order of objects being compared. So, bawal magbalibaliktad ang number ng bawat terms. Okay, next natin, same picture pa rin. We have 8 boys, we have 12 girls, total of 20 pupils. So, this time, Iko-compare naman natin yung part ng picture to its whole. Iko-compare natin si 8 boys to 20 pupils or and then 12 girls uh, compared to 20 total number of pupils. So, pwede yun. So, example, compare the number of girls to the pupils in fraction, word, and colon form. So, fraction form natin ang ating uh, ang ating unang term ay number of girls. Ang second term natin, total number of pupils. So, ang kanyang fraction form, ano ba ang bilang ng number of girls natin? Ay 12. So, eto siya. 12. 12. Ano ba ang total natin? 20. 20. So, 20, uh, 12 is to 20 is na higher form. So, kailangan express natin siya or pwede, express natin siya into simplest, simplest form. So, papano? Ang GCF ng 12 and 20 ay 4. So, pwede na tayo mag-divide. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So, the simplest, simplest form of 12 to 20 is 3 is to 5. So, we can read this 12 is to 20 as 3 is to 5. The next, ang word form niya naman ay 12 is to 20 as 3 is to 5. The next, ang kanyang colon form, 12 is to 20 as 3 is to 5. Kapag fraction form, kapag word form, kapag colon form, pare-parehas lang yung basa pero magkakaiba ang paraan ng kanilang pagsulat. Okay. Special ratio is called rate. So, ano ba ang special ratio dito sa sinasinidiscuss natin? Ang special ratio ay uh, kinocompare natin yung dalawang numbers na magkaiba ang kanilang units. So, example natin, number 1, express the ratio of 15 minutes to 2 hours in colon form. So, ang units natin, minutes and hours. So, alam naman natin na ang 2 hours ay mas mataas kumpara kay 15 minutes. So, hindi natin siyang pwedeng isulat na 15 is to 2. Walang units, mali ang pagkakasulat ng ratio ng 15 minutes to 2 to 2 hours. So, ano ang dapat gawin? Ang dapat ng gaw natin gawin, ipalitan natin si 2 hours into minutes. So, every 1 hour, we have 60 minutes. So, kung meron tayong 2 hours, meron tayong 120 minutes. So, ang magiging ratio niya, 15 is to 120 as 1 is to 8. So, saan natin nakuha ang 120? Pinalitan natin ang 2 hours ng minutes. Kaya, kaya nakuha ang 120. At saan naman natin nakuha ang 1 is to 8? Ni lowest term natin ang 15 is to 120. So, paano yon 15 divided by 15 is equal to 1. And 120 divided by 15 is equal to 8. So, itong nakakulay green naka-fraction form. So, ang inihingi, na rin, inihingi dito ay naka-colon form. Kaya, itong nakadilaw, naka-shade na yellow, yan ang tamang sagot. 
15 is to 120 as 1 is to 8. Tandaan, ang 120, change natin ang 2 hours into minutes, ang 1 is to 8, naka -low, ang lowest term ng 15 is to 120. And then next, next example, uh, Gab reads 45 pages a novel in 2 hours. So this time, Oo, para magkaiba ang kanilang units pero hindi na natin siya kailangan mag-change ng units. Isusulat na lang natin siyang as 45 pages is to 2 hours. Or pwede natin basahin niya na 45 pages per 2 hours. 45 pages every 2, two hours. Sa Tagalog, uh, 45 pages kada dalawang oras ang nababasa ni Kab. Okay, meron tayong tinatawag na unit rate. So, ano ba ang unit rate? It is a ratio with denominator of 1. So, kapag sinimplify natin yung isang ratio na merong denominator na 1, ang tawag doon ay unit rate. So, example, Joel arranged the 20 chairs in 2 rows. How many chairs are there in each row? So, pakita ko sa inyo kung paano makuha ang unit rate. So, there, there is 20 chairs. Ayan yung first term natin. So, eto siya. So, ang first term natin ay 20 chairs. Next, ang ating second term ay 2 rows. So, ano yung uh, GCF ng 20 and 2? para may lowest term natin siya. So, ang kanyang GCF ay 2. So, when we divide 20 chairs to 2, ang sagot ay 10. So, 10 chairs. 2 rows divided by 2 is equal to 1 row. So, tingnan nyo yung denominator. Ang denominator natin ay 1. So, 1 row. So, ang magiging, ang bali magiging, Ano na lang siya? So, 20 chairs per row. 10 chairs every row. Or 10 chairs is 2 row. So, ang tawag dyan ay unit rate. So, ang denominator niya ay 1. No? Automatic, kapag ang nakalagay dyan ay row, meron siyang invisible na 1. So, ang ibig sabihin niya, equivalent to 1 row. The next, another example, express the unit rate of 100 cans of milk for 50 babies. So, ang first term natin ay 100 at ang ating second term ay 50 babies. So, ano ang GCF ng 150? So, ang GCF nila ay 50. So, 100 cans divided by 50 is equal to 2 and then 50 divided by, by 50 is equal to 1 so ito ang 1 tatanggalin lang natin siya ang magiging sagot natin ay 2 cans every baby or 2 cans per baby or 2 cans is 2 baby is to 1 baby so clear kung ano ang unit rate tatandaan ang unit rate Kapag sinimplify mo yung isang ratio, naka lowest term, ang denominator ay 1. Ang tawag doon ay unit rate. Kapag meron siyang units, of course. Kapag wala namang units, okay, uh, 1. Ilalagay lang na 1. Pero kapag merong units or magkaibang units na may denominator na 1, ang tawag doon ay unit rate. Next, equivalent ratios. Two ratios that represent the same comparison. So, paano ba gumawa ng equivalent ratios? Pwedeng multiplication, pwedeng by dividing. So, paano yun? Subukan natin muna sa multiplying. So, write ratio that are equivalent to 4 is to 7. So, paano ginagamit ang multiplying para magkaroon ng equivalent fraction? Kapag ito ay naka lowest term na siya. Kapag walang GCF, yung isang ratio. Sin 4 is to 5 is to 7 ay nasa lowest term. Multiplication ang ating gagamitin. 
So, 4 is to 7, we can multiply in x. Nang, pwede natin siya i-multiply ng kahit anong number. So, sa example ko, i-multiply ko siya sa 2. So, 4 times 2 is equal to 8. 7 times 2 is equal to 14. So, kailangan, pag multiply mo yung numerator and denominator mo, the same number lang. Para equals yung magiging product, product mo na ratio. So, 4 is to 7 is equivalent to 8 is to 14. So, pwede rin natin siyang i-multiply sa 3. So, 4 times 3 is equal to 12. 7 times 3 is equal to 21. Another example, 4 times 4 is equal to 16. 7 times 4 is equal to 28. So, ang multiply natin dyan, 2, 3, and 4. Lahat ng products na yan ay equivalent to 4 is to 7. So, these ratios are equal. So, 4 is to 7, as 8 is to 14, as 12 is to 21, as 16 is to 28. So, lahat ng yan ay the same lang ang value. They are all equal. No? Ginagamit natin ang, ang multiplication kapag nasa lowest term na yung isang ratio para makakuha tayo ng equivalent ratio. And the next then ay ang division or dividing. The ratio that, write the ratios that are equivalent to 25 is to 20. So, dito naman, ang hahanapin natin ay yung GCF niya. Kapag sa division, uh, kapag division technique ang gagamitin natin sa pagkuha ng equivalent ng isang ratio, kapag ito ay nasa higher term, pwede tayong mag-divide. Remember, higher term ang given ratios. Kung meron siyang GCF, division ang gagamitin. Okay, so 5 divided by 5 is equal to 5. 20 divided by 5, 5 is equal to 4. So, the equivalent of equivalent ratio of 25 is to 20 is 5 is to 4. So, tandaan lang, ginagamit natin ang dividing sa pagkuha ng equivalent ratio kapag nasa higher term ang given ratio natin. Kapag naman nasa lowest term ang given ratio, pwede tayong mag-multiply in any na. Mag pwede na tayong mag-multiply ng kahit anong numbers. So, the concept of ratio, tatandaan lang natin ano ba ang ratio, ano ang rate, ano ang unit rate. So, ratio is a comparison of two quantities which can be written in colon, word, or fraction form. It must be always expressed in the simplest form. Rate is a comparison of two quantities but may have different units of measurements. measurement and the ratio has a unit measure. A unit rate is a ratio with denominator of 1. So, ang susunod nating video ay continuation lang nito, yung concept of proportion naman. So, sa next video, abangan kung ano yung proportion. So, see you on next video. Thank you.